from the football to soccer. I don't, do you call it football or do you call it soccer? I call it football because of my dad. Okay. Because <laughs> my dad refers to it as football. He doesn't really refer to it as soccer, so. Right. That would make sense. Yeah. Is he is he an Englishman? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That'd yeah. Be why. Yeah. So, no, it, it, which be, is confusing in our house because my father's also a very diehard Seahawks fan. So, you know, whenever he comes, he'll, he'll usually refer to, when he refers to, like, North American football, <clears throat> he'll just call, he'll just say Seahawks. <laughs> just, yeah. just one name for the sport, just Seahawks. Yeah. Is the, the Seahawks are playing, so. <laughs> That's amazing. You know, so. Coming in here watching you watch soccer, or football, sorry, it reminds it me of Giant. Like, it takes me back to, to that record. <laughs> and I was thinking, I, I, was, I was listening to an interview while I was researching this of, from, from when the last record came out, you saying, I don't do videos anymore, they're too expensive, it's not worth it anymore. But you seem to figure out a way to do it for this record. Well, what happened was, is when I went over to do some shows in England, um, uh, Dave, who's shot a bunch of stuff from like Madonna to Rihanna to whatever's like footage, concert footage and that sort of stuff. He kind of put something together and he had contacted me privately and just saying, you know, why don't we just do, have some fun. And then there, my record company got a hold of it and they were like, how about we pay you to shoot the show? And uh, so they shot the show and he shot me doing some stuff. Like I went out into the audience and sang Load Me Up completely acoustic, like in the middle of the floor and he shot that. but. He also filmed me walking from the hotel to the show. So, you know, I guess, I, I and, and up until this time, I, I didn't really realize that the whole lyric video thing was like a really pot, new popular thing that you people did. You're a big technology guy. Uh, yeah, I know, I, I just completely out of the loop on that. They were like, well, let's do a lyric video. And they came up with one and it was pretty cool, but then Dave put that footage together and they liked that better, so they put that out, which of course has nothing to do with the song or anything like that, but, um, you know, we, uh, I don't know. It, it would, works. I, I, yeah, I enjoy doing videos. <clears throat> I enjoy doing videos if, uh, you know, obviously the budget's there to do them properly. Uh, do you want to talk about that song? Because you're doing like a different, like I was listening back to that song, I don't know, three or four times today, and it it almost has like a Dylan kind of cadence to it at times, just the way you're speaking the verses. Yeah, I, <clears throat> if anything. And I mean that as a compliment. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> if anything influenced that song, it's uh, been, tired by the, been Tired by the Pixies. Okay. Right, you know? You know, one, two, three, she's a real, th like that whole verse is brilliant, <laughs> right? So. If I lifted it from anywhere, it was from... All right. It was, I didn't mean lifting. From, it just meant, like, it was... I'd never heard something like that from yeah. before. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I've, I haven't done anything like that before. Maybe maybe 21st Century Living on Avalanche is a little bit like that, but, uh, uh, yeah. I kind of was pretty inspired by Charles, you know? Mm. I hear also Afghan Wigs very inspiring on the record. Yeah, like well, that's I mean, what kicked off both of those thing. bands have been kind of, you know, huge inspirations of mine for a long time, so... I mean, more so obviously the Pixies when I was, you know, younger. I mean, Doolittle came up the year I graduated from high school, so, you know, there were the EPs before that. But, um, you know, the Wigs really didn't really arrive on the scene till about 1990, 1991. So, so if if the the Wigs inspired Via De La Rosa, how did that song inspire the rest of the record? If that was the first one, how did you? Did it, did um, it? Yeah, well, I wrote Via De La Rosa and, and <clears throat> quickly after that or around the same time, I wrote uh, Arrows of Desire as well. So they were both happening. I'd mm -hmm. kind of bounced back and forth and they were both happening at the same time. So um, I don't know. I just, for me, with regards to the Afghan wig, like the kind of the inspiration for the wigs, I, I don't really take uh, the like direct... I don't direct influence, you know what I mean? Like, I, I kind of do what I do, but certain things influence me. I mean, like, the, the kind of the, not kind of, the abandon that Greg Dooley has. Like, um, you know, when he sings, mm -hmm. completely out of tune. But he does it, and it's magnificent. Um, and in the chorus of that song, it's just kind of got that abandon in it. I mean, I sing in tune, yeah, but it's, I felt that it had that abandon in it when I demoed it. And, Kind of after coming off the road with Lights and Major Species, uh, I just I fell back into just listening to a playlist that I had, uh, just of a lot of bands like that, and uh, it's just you know what inspired me to pick up the guitar and write what I wrote. So how long after you got off the road did you start writing for this? 
Like, do you do you always have a grace period? I mean, this is like 13 records in now. Do you have like a routine now where you need a couple weeks off and then get back into it, or are you just it really going do, all it, the time? it just happens usually. I mean, when I was younger, I wrote all the time, right? But you know, in a hotel room, wherever I was writing all the time. Now I write, you know, I'm like, okay, I've got to write a record, so I write a record, and um, so it really it, it'll depend. Sometimes I'll come off the road. And it'll be between like being off the road and then say festival stuff in the summer, and then I'll start then in the you know or coming back like coming back up like between Canada and the states, I'll maybe mess around a little bit, and um, or sometimes I'll leave until I'm completely done, and then I'll just jump back into it, you know. And just how it comes out is how it comes out, right? No. Yeah. Talking about the old days there for a second, I got a Twitter question from a, from someone today, mm -hmm. um, asking about that that first. I don't even know if that first record of demos was a thing or the history teachers what some that's people not, have called that's, it yeah that's not even that's uh that thing that was uh, just a thing put together of, of a bunch of demos by um by a guy i used to do some recording with and that played piano um for me for a little while and uh he put that together um and i i had nothing to do with it at all <laughs> well except for writing the songs well yeah and singing but, the songs yeah but it's not something that I would have ever had, you know, released or accessible to people. Well, that was the question, will you ever release it? Or no. re-record it was the question. I was no. like, I don't think he'll re-record the songs he wrote when he was like 16 years old. No, no, I don't, you know, they're highly naive and, you know, that everyone has to start somewhere and mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, you learn your craft and, uh, yeah, they're not, they're not very representative of what I, I mean, hell, I, hell, I hate my first actual album, so. So do you, do you never touch the songs live, even though you know people want to hear them? Off last of the Ghetto Astronauts, the only thing I play live is if I'm playing acoustically, I'll play uh, Emissions of the Omen. That's mm -hmm. a hidden track. It's the only song off that record I play. Interesting. How um, do you come up with a set list now that there are so many songs people want to hear? Mm, and you, obviously you want to play the new stuff too. With a band, it's very difficult because you have to kind of choose your poison before a tour, mm -hmm. rehearsing it. Um, what I do is, with new records, I have we know every song from a new record, so we can play, right. you know, that. You bring the same guys that play on the record on yeah. the road? Well, on this record, they played on the record. Okay. On previous records, I played everything with the drums. Okay. And then so, then I'd have other people come in and maybe do some guitar, like play a guitar solo that I'd written, but play it in a, diff like, in a different kind of way, so it's not yeah. obviously. Yeah, well, everyone's got their own feel. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, the band that I play with uh, now, they, they, they played all their, their stuff on this album, because I produced produced it as well and, and I've produced self-produced myself several times in the past but I was also playing everything at the same time so I thought this time it'd be better if that I would just do my bits and I could pr actually produce it mm -hmm. so um, well how does that change that so, so we'll get back to what you're saying in a but how does that change the whole process of that must be so different then oh it's it's, it's a lot easier to produce <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sure it is There's right because you're sitting there, yeah because yeah, you're sitting there kind of going you know you've just done take a bass and you're just like well how about that yeah and I, I'm I'm notoriously uh, when I, especially when I self-produce and, and I'm working primarily by myself, I'm notoriously like very fast at what I do because I'm the only person. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like, okay, yep, we got that. Okay, yep, we got that. Okay, yep, we got that. That felt good. I, I like that. I like how that sounded. Let's go, you know. And then when you produce other people, um, you know, you have the greater picture in your head, so it, it's more, you know, obviously discussing and translating ideas to them. With regards to like, you know, I really like this, or or maybe they'll put a, a little twist and a turnaround. And you'd be like, yeah, let's explore that, or you know, that kind of. So, thing. what song so, changed the most on this record from the demo you had? Um, what did the band really bring to to this record? Uh, well, a lot song? of Anthony's, you know, a lot of a lot of Anthony's Moog stuff mm -hmm. was, you know, on on songs like Garden Knives and 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 that sort of thing. Uh, uh, the middle bit in uh, Letters in Wartime wasn't piano originally, it was still guitar. Mm. Um, and then um, I, in the middle of that, decided I didn't want to go with guitar and I asked Anthony to play the guitar line on a piano, which he did, and so that, al that ultimately changed. Um, Jim came up with a couple of really great guitar, guitar ideas, um, and uh, you know, Milos came up with some some interesting bass stuff as well. Nothing that really left the kind of path, you know, like the what I had laid down originally, mm -hmm. but that expounded upon it, 
in, in, in certain ways too, right? So, and you have to remember that it all depends on, on you know, matching stuff up. Like a player will always play, like when Milos is playing along with Pat when he's playing drums, you know, I'll, I, on the demos, I'll have played the drums. So when I get another, a drummer in to do it, obviously I, I'll produce, go through a song, produce him, and talk about what, where I want, what kind of fills I want where, mm -hmm. and then you know a base, you know someone like Milos will play to those fills and that sort of thing. So, sure. Yeah. What's the fastest you've ever done a song by yourself, like start to finish? Oh well, I mean I made hospital music in, in three weeks. Really? Mm. That's the. Oh no, there's a lot of full band songs on that. I always think of that as a slower record for some reason. Yeah, I know, but there's 15 songs or something like on that on yeah. that record. Yeah. That's uh, probably the most. I mean, why did you feel so rushed to do it? I didn't feel rushed. It that's just, just, it just how bloody. That's anyway. just how fast I did it. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> that's a good answer. Okay. You know, I played everything on that record. My app, there actually, except for Rod, Rod's guitar solo. Uh, in Champions of Nothing and Ryan's Ryan Dahl's guitar part um, on Devils in Your Details, played everything else myself, including like all the keyboards and everything. But I was just, I don't know. I just, it was, we just came in and worked from 11 in the morning to midnight and got it done. Right? Yeah. Social media. Just want to switch it up for a second, okay. here, just because because uh, I had that Twitter question, and I liked your post today and yesterday. Like you spelled Miley Cyrus wrong, and then was like, whatever, I don't care. Good. Um, but then you defended her today, and I was totally in that same boat of why are people talking about this? Why is this the big news story yesterday when there's so much other stuff going on in the world? I know it's 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 kind of pathetic, really. I mean, I don't see that she did anything different than anybody else. That's Isn't that the point of the show, is to be risque and to be the person that everyone's talking about the next day? So you have to go crazy? Yeah. Or not go crazy, that's the wrong word, but go extreme? You know, I mean, we forget all these things, right? We forget that Elvis Presley was, you know, I mean, called every name in the book by everyone for simply gyrating his freaking hips. We look back at that footage now and it's the most harmless, bloody thing you can imagine, you know? But it's this well-dressed kid with an acoustic guitar, you know, singing completely unoffensive songs. And, you know, and it's, I don't know, it, it, it's interesting. And of course, probably 20 years from now, they'll look back at what we thought was offensive now and, uh, and you know, and think it ridiculous that we thought it offensive in the first place. But, you know, I mean, I just find it interesting that her performance is, what's critiqued. People don't look at the song or the, mm -hmm. or anything like that. It's just, well, what she did. And obviously that was for effect. I mean, like you come out of the Disney kind of corporation of being a child star and you've got to do something to sustain a career. And one way to do it as a young adult, obviously, is to play up on, you know, that whole, the whole sexuality thing, right? And hopefully capture, a, a, you know, a later teen, early 20 market out of it because you're not going to be, a, what are you going to be, 30 and still have the tween market following you, you know? All those kids that grow, you know, all the kids that grew up with her that were tweens are, are all listening to different music now. And, you know, they're not, they don't want to hear Hannah Montana. You know, they'll be like, oh, I remember when I was eight, and, you know, Hannah Montana. So, but then again, it's difficult also for me to comment on it because I have no frame of reference when it comes to things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't grow up in any a place that, or with that kind of, you know, I don't even know the word for it. All I remember is I remember when Zeppelin, the last time Zeppelin played Vancouver, all the older kids in the neighborhood came home with the, those blue shirts with the, mm -hmm. with the Zoso guy on it, right? And being so jealous. That I that I you know that I was just just a little too young to go, and uh, and you know that's how you learned about music back then, right? I mean you know you were back and black came in the mail practically like those little samples of Tide, you know. I mean that's how big that album was, and you know there was no them playing some music award show or what. And if they would have, there would have just been them playing, you know. Back in Black or, you know, You Shook Me All Night Long or whatever, mm -hmm. right? So, I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of a weird thing, you know? There's so many artists out there that do it that, that uh, I, people are just caught in the, this whole thing. Like, she, she was this, you know, highly controlled 
um, uh, brand. And then now that she's grown up and can't be that brand anymore, what is she supposed to do? Like turn to Christian gospel and so everyone will be really happy about it? And, you know, uh, I don't know. I really don't. <laughs> I, I, I really don't know. I don't know what to say. I mean, I like the answer. I'm happy with that. Mm. <laughs> I, you, and you said in there, 20 years from now, it got me thinking about that future blog post you wrote where you, where you talked about being in an old age retirement home right. at 65. I can't see you doing that because I don't think you can get. Can are you? Would you be okay with never playing music again at 65 and just? Well, it doesn't mean or I performing would, for the oldies in, yeah, in that room. It, it, yeah, it doesn't mean that I. You know, we can go to the rec room and have a little bit of fun. But hey, man. Three meals a day, you know, China service, excursions. <laughs> excursions. Oh, I'm not the only one that's in on this. Well, my wife wants to do it I too. Know, you, could you, you, would you be happy not making records and not going on tour again? You see, if I could live in a retirement home <laughs> yeah. and just, just hang out like cocoon style? <laughs> Hell yeah, All son. Right. Come on. I mean, that's, it's kind of like being on a cruise ship, but it never moves. It's, come on. That's, isn't that the, isn't that the goal? Isn't that what we I, all? I don't, I don't know. what we all live to do? Is just to retire. Well, there's the George Burns way of just going out all the way. No, you can, you know, you can do that too. I mean, obviously, <laughs> yes, I'm an artist, and I'll be an artist till the day I die. But uh, you know, obviously, I meant that more humorously. No, I know. <laughs> um, and 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 I and I and I say that more in the context that I probably will just never have the financial freedom to actually ever be able to do that, because those places are pretty expensive. Yeah. Anywho. <laughs> Five quick questions, one word answers. We've done this before, but it was okay. years ago, so I wonder how that okay. goes. Okay. Road okay. or studio? Oh, road. Lennon or McCartney? Pardon? Lennon or McCartney? Oh, Lennon. When you hear a song, what usually hits you first? Lyrics, melody, or rhythm? Lyrics. Song, or no, we changed it up recently. If someone's never heard Matthew Good before, what song do they start with? Non populous. In one word, Matthew Good. I'm shaking my head right now. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs>